Welcome to People Doing Good for Others. Welcome to People Doing Good for Others, where we praise and celebrate and honor those who are truly making significant differences in our communities. I'm Gary York, and I'm grateful to be here today. I want to thank Wilkes Communications, River Street Productions, and 100.9 WIFM for this opportunity. And again, please uh, stick with us as this is going to be a wonderful experience. My featured guest today is Will Bishop. He lives here in Wilkes County. And he's involved in Boy Scouts of America as a volunteer. He grew up in Monroe, graduated from East Carolina University, and is a retired Air Force officer. And again, thank you for being here. It's my pleasure. Thanks morning, for the opportunity. Good morning. Just so honored to be uh, about Boy Scouting. It's just always been an inspiration in my life. And if you will, uh, let's go back to your career in the military. I spent uh, 22 years in the United States Air Force, uh, predominantly in the satellite operations, satellite command and control uh, business. Um, I uh, retired from the Air Force in 2007 and went to work uh, with my wife's company. She is a speech language pathologist and uh, I took over pretty much everything except speech pathology. So if she needs uh, billing, bookkeeping, uh, um, tire changes, whatever it takes to keep her on the road and keep her working. That's my way of kind of giving back to her after she gave, you know, so much during my career to, to me. Um, uh, Will Bishop, you talked about your career and about your attachment to scouting. Uh, kind of bring that together for me. Well, um, I started scouting uh, when my son became uh, Cub Scout age, so he joined as a Tiger Cub first grader, and I followed him uh, all the way through to Eagle Scout. Um, and when he aged out of the program, uh, I stayed on in scouting. But scouting is, is a good partnership with the military, because as you move from town to town and place to place, everywhere you go, uh, there are Boy Scout units, and your, your child has a place to fit into a unit. Uh, you have a group of adults outside of the Air Force that you have a different type of shared experience with through scouting, uh, and it was a great, uh, a great partnership for our family. Everywhere we went, we not only had an Air Force home uh, and a community home, but we had a scouting home, and it was a great way to, uh, to, to travel around the country and meet a lot of great people that, that share the same kind of values that, that we share and promote. So, Will, that's, that's kind of a a great mixer, a quickest way to meet people you could imagine, I guess. That's right. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. So when you move, when you would leave, the Air Force would send you to another place, then you knew the scouting would always be there. That's exactly right. That's one of the first, along with looking for schools, we look for scout units and a place <laughs> for our son to, to continue his scouting journey. I think it'd be a good time for us to talk about the values of Boy Scouting and how it started and uh, some of those things that, that you are so near and dear to you, Will Bishop. Well, the mission of the Boy Scouts of America is to prepare eligible youth to make moral and ethical choices throughout their lifetime by instilling in them the values of the Scout Oath and the Scout Law. Uh, the Scout Oath um, is where a young person and an adult leader um, takes their commitment to um, God, uh, to their community, uh, and country, and, and ultimately also to themselves in, in living by a, a code or a set of values. And the Scout Law is a list of 12 points where um, we express what's important to us. Trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. And we feel like in this program, if we can instill those values in others, uh, and the founder of the Boy Scout movement um, knew that if we could instill those kind of values in others that the world would be a better place. And, uh, and so that's what we strive for and that's what we try to, uh, to put in the forefront uh, with young people and the types of activities that we do. 
Scouting has been around uh, in the United States since 1910, uh, and we have a unit in Wilkes County that's been around for 87 years. Uh, and so this program not only goes back a long way in the country, it goes back a long way in Wilkes County as well. So, Talk about the troop. So that's uh, Troop 336. Um, they are in uh, North Wilkesboro, um, and they have a, a long history uh, here in the county. Uh, 87 years is a long time for anything, uh, but uh, certainly a long time for that troop, and it's, it's really due to dedicated leaders, uh, the continuity of, of leadership, and, and also to a chartering organization, um, the Presbyterian Church, uh, that supports them and has supported them for all of those years. How did, what was your first connection here in Wilkes County? Uh, I was at uh, a restaurant in town and uh, I saw a leader in a scout uniform. I was, uh, had just moved here, or actually I had not even completed moving here. I was in the process of reworking my home and getting ready to move here. And I saw a leader in uniform in a restaurant. I walked up and introduced myself to him. Uh, turns out he was one of our uh, handful of paid professionals that we have in the area that supports the volunteers in the program. Sure. Uh, he gave me a card and said, well, when you move here, you should show up on the second Tuesday at six o'clock and there'll be some other scouters uh, that, that I'm sure would like to meet you. And so I completed the move and I waited a, a month or two and then I decided, you know, it's time to go meet some of these people that do scouting here in Wilkes County. And I showed up and uh, it's about five years ago and um, the, you know, the rest is history. We, we pick up with a group of people, uh, we have a mission and we move forward with it here in Wilkes County. Uh, Will Bishop, let's go back to your uh, family business with your wife and a little bit about what she, I think that's important too. Let's talk about her and the role you play in this uh, business. She is a uh, speech language pathologist. She works with uh, special needs preschoolers predominantly um, that have uh, significant issues related to uh, speech and language development or related to feeding and swallowing issues. Um, or just general communication difficulties that are brought on by any number of conditions. And she works with those children in their home, in their natural environment. Um, and what I do for the business is uh, pretty much the, the medical billing, uh, the bookkeeping, the contracting with insurance companies, the, the um, credentialing and accreditation and that sort of thing. And, uh, and as I like to tell people, and I'm happy to do anything else she needs me to do as well, and, uh, and that's kind of my way of supporting her the way that she supported me for a number of years. And She's, she goes in the home. She does. Uh, well, wherever the natural environment issue happens to be. So sometimes it's home, sometimes it's daycare. Uh, if there's a special issue going on, she can, uh, she can arrange to meet you and, and uh, work just about anywhere the child needs uh, to, to be worked with. So she's a mobile business and uh, she goes where the child is. Now I want to go to the Cub Scout the part of your life and starting with your son and uh, what are the values that we are sharing at five and six years old? Just tell us a little bit about how that works. Well, Cub Scouting has been around since 1930. Uh, the younger boy, the younger child program, and that's uh, uh, now kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, and we start early. They, they use the same oath and law that the Boy Scout program uses. Um, and they, they learn early what each one of those points of the law means. What does it mean to be kind? What does it mean to be um, you know, thrifty? What does it mean to be helpful? Um, and we teach those through uh, a variety of activities that, uh, that are age appropriate through a scouting curriculum. So we obviously, people think of scouting and they think about the outdoors, which we, we definitely are outdoors uh, uh, focused. But we also do a lot of other things, uh, everything from uh, from health and nutrition to uh, technology related things. We teach young kids how to be safe on the internet uh, and what that means. We, we really, at the younger age program, it is a family program. Most of the requirements that a young person would work through involve some sort of activity or discussion with their family, uh, whoever that family happens to be. Um, and then there's also the religious and faith component as well. Even in the Cub Scout ages, rank advancements uh, do require uh, children to kind of explore their faith a little bit and their beliefs. And so uh, it is an age appropriate curriculum that, that really starts now at kindergarten um, and carries them through the fifth grade. 
when they get into the, the older boy program, I'll back up a little bit. So some of the things that the Cub Scout program is known for, other than being outdoors and things, of course, one of our biggest events every year is the Pinewood Derby, where you actually uh, get a block of wood and a set of wheels, and it is your job to turn that into a race car. Uh, and we do that um, uh, every year. That they, they do it at their unit level, and then they come together at the district for the district race. And, uh, and that's kind of one of the, uh, the, the keystone events in a Cub Scouts uh, year. Uh, my son still has a collection of cars that, that he and I made together over the years. Oh and I remember the one year that I had as a Cub Scout where uh, the man who is now my stepfather and has been since I was in the fourth grade, and I made a Pinewood Derby car and we took it and raced it. And if people don't think it has an impact, I will tell you that I can still see the room and I can still see the car uh, and, and it was a great event. Uh, and when I talked to my stepfather about scouting, he's 87, when I talked to him about scouting, most of the time he will mention we made a Pinewood Derby car. Um, so those kind, of, those kind of activities that not so only the partnership teach. partnership develops uh, the great uh, bonding that came through the car. Ab absolutely, and scouting is, uh, is, as I've said earlier, a family activity. Um, and so scouting is not only good for community and country, uh, and young person, but it helps also build good families. Um, and, and we have just some terrific scouting families everywhere I've ever been. Uh, and it's because of that experience that the, the scouting program can give them. When you get into the older boy uh, program, what we typically think of as Boy Scouts, not Cub Scouts, uh, the Boy Scout program starts turning a little bit differently because among the other things that we teach young people uh, is leadership. We are trying to give them opportunities to understand leadership and, and what that means and the kind of situations you can encounter. So an ideal troop is boy-led, and they have a scoutmaster, um, and the scoutmaster is there for mentoring and guidance, and they have a committee and other adults that are supporting the troop. But the goal is to eventually teach those boys to take responsibility for their troop and lead themselves through the effort of, of running and having a troop and an outdoor program uh, and a merit badge program and all of those things that uh, that people know scouting for. As a volunteer, uh, we had talked briefly about uh, turning shoulders. I like the way you said that. Well, share that with us today. Uh, it's safe to say that as a young person, uh, every now and then I may have been a degree or two off uh, from, a, from the course I needed to be on. And I had hardworking parents, uh, and I had parents that, that understood uh, in my mind, they understood how and when to provide that little course correction. So if I'm heading over here just a little bit and I need to be heading over here, that would be where they would kind of turn the shoulder. Uh, sometimes it was in a very cordial and counseling method, and sometimes it might have been in a very corrective method, uh, depending on the situation. But one of the, the methods of scouting is also association with adults as I like to say, association with adults other than your parents. Uh, we all know that sometimes kids respond better uh, to a scoutmaster or assistant scoutmaster uh, that may or may not be their parent, uh, but, but sometimes they respond better if it's not their parent. And they get that association with other adults, again, kind of bound by the, uh, the mission and the shared values and, and, our, and our purpose and our, and our program. Uh, and that's, that's a big plus for young people, too, uh, to have that association with adults. I know my son, when he left Colorado to move to North Carolina, one of the last stops he made was to uh, the house of his life to Eagle Mentor. And that was an assistant scoutmaster in his troop, and he said, you know, before I leave town, I'd like to go see Mr. Neal. And we went and had dinner with their family, and, uh, but that's the kind of association outside of my family that my son had with other adults. Uh, and that's an important part of the program as well. Will Bishop, what is the transition from Cub to Scout to, just walk right through that about if a person pursuing the Eagle will need to do these, uh, let's talk about okay. from here to there. Sure, know. sure, so Cub Scouting, uh, when you join into Cub Scouting is a kindergartner now uh, and a first grader, um, in the, you're a lion and then a tiger, you work through a series of what we call adventures. They are different program blocks uh, that, that a scout gets to learn and do things. And those in the early years are, are, like I said, influenced by the parents and the leaders and they are worked together. Uh, with the young people get that feeling of belonging to a den, a wolf den or a bear den, 
um, working through things together, and then they go home with little homework assignments that they work with their families, and they progress through the ranks uh, all the way through to the, to the end of the fifth grade. Um, the transition to Boy Scout troop, Boy Scout packs are the youngers, the Boy Scout troops are the older uh, youth, and Boy Scout troops um, are generally where they make the transition to the boy still belongs to a group. He's now assigned to a patrol, um, and in that patrol he works with other youth uh, on different things. But they have the guidance of assistant scoutmasters and the scoutmaster that kind of oversees that program. When they get into the older boy program, their advancement um, is, is much more up to them. Um, so there's rank advancement, so you go from scout to tenderfoot, first, second, uh, or second, first, um, Life. Star, Life, and Eagle. And so during that process, each one of those ranks has a set of requirements. And those requirements uh, could involve anything like uh, their camping requirements, their first aid requirements, um, spend a lot of time with cooking and meal planning, both in the home and on the trail. Um, they, uh, they work through different merit badges. Uh, there, there are 13 required merit badges. But in addition to earning their rank requirements, they have to earn so many merit badges as they go uh, from a, a list of the ones that are required for Eagle and then a list of 135 other that they can choose from uh, to earn. And uh, the minimum number of merit badges you would earn on the way to Eagle would be 21. Um, and in addition to the rank advancements and the merit badges required and optional, um, you have a certain number of nights camping that you would, that you would want to get in, long-term camping like a week at, at Camp Raven Knob. Short-term camping would be your once a month outing for a weekend. You have um, service hours at every rank. There's a certain number of service hours that we want young people to, uh, to engage in, both in Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts, uh, to get those service hours in as part of their advancement um, and, and move towards the preparation for the, the steps from life to Eagle. The service hours are, is new. Um, they've increased them recently over the years because again what we are trying to do is if you're going to be prepared for life and if you're going to be supporting your community, uh, service is an important part of that and we want them to have the opportunity to learn that service and experience the rewards of that service early. So now that you've got all of the steps and the blocks, you have the, the, the final step to Eagle is an Eagle Scout Leadership Service Project which is a project outside of scouting for the community. So it could be for a church or other community organization uh, where a scout finds an idea and plans it, puts a proposal forward to the committee uh, at the district uh, and his unit uh, for approval. They, uh, they get that approval and then it's that scout's job to work that plan and to go from here's what I planned and here's what we're gonna accomplish, work that start to finish, Learn some lessons along the way. Um, you know, no plan survives first contact with uh, reality. And so they work those changes. They, they talk to a mentor about those changes. They come back and share the results with their unit committee and the district committee. And then they're ready to meet their Eagle Scout Board of Review. And the Board of Review is where they sit in front of a group of people that ask them questions about their scouting experience. What did you learn from this? What did you learn from your Eagle project? What did you right. learn? What is your yeah. What do you like about Final scouting? Step. Absolutely. And, and the Board of Review is where people say uh, that young person is ready to be an Eagle Scout and that is the final step. Will Bishop, as a volunteer, you are a trainer. And uh, tell us a little bit about, if you will, give us a specific about uh, a role you might play in a troop. Okay, so in, in a unit, uh, when I was a, a member of a unit with my son, um, what I would do there as a committee chair or as an assistant scoutmaster is, uh, is take the own, my own training that I'm responsible for, but also encourage my fellow leaders to go and get training. From the district level, uh, having worked um, as a trainer at the district, uh, we have monthly uh, roundtable meetings where we talk about what's new in the program and things change all the time, where we offer uh, additional training on top of the minimums. Um, and I would say probably for a volunteer organization, I don't know another volunteer organization that spends as much time and effort building training programs and offering those programs to volunteers to make sure we're putting forward 
the best volunteers that we have, the best people in front of these young people. And so uh, one of the areas of adult leadership training that I've spent a great deal of time with is, is Wood Badge. And that is a course that is designed to take a leader and put him or her in the shoes of a scout. And where they live and work in a troop, they camp as a troop, and, uh, and that is the highest level of adult leadership training in the Boy Scouts of America. Um, 2019 marks the 100th anniversary of Wood Badge. Wood Badge. Uh, Wood Badge, and it is an adult, it is BSA's adult leadership training uh, course. The high, it is the pinnacle of adult leadership training in Boy Scouts. So, uh, if a youngster, if a parents or guardians today have a youngster of age and wants to contact to get involved, how would you do that? There's a couple of ways. With back to school is also our fall recruiting. So at every elementary school in Wilkes County, uh, there will be a join scout night and they'll see yard signs in the, in the uh, drive through to pick up and drop off children. They will see a folder, a uh, flyer go home in the take home folder. Uh, and that's the first way to connect right there at your school. There will be a day and a time for each school to have their join scouting night. Uh, any parent can also go to beascout.org and if you type in your zip code, it will bring up a map that shows all of the Cub Scout units uh, that are near you and wow. the contact information for each unit and each leader uh, for that unit. And if you click on that link and put in some minimal information, uh, someone from that unit should contact you uh, and talk to you about how to, how to join scouting at the unit. It'll also tell you when and where the, the units normally meet. Um, you can also go to our our district is the Wilkes District, Wilkes County. Our council is the Old Hickory Council, and they're in Winston-Salem, and they serve an eight-county area, which includes Wilkes. But oldhickorycouncil.org uh, also has a website, and the upper left-hand corner is a big box that says Join Now, and if you click that box, it will also give you an opportunity to provide minimal information and get contacted, or you can actually fill out an application online uh, and once you've chosen a unit that you want to join. Uh, and you can join right there online. One of the, I think, most significant uh, values is that we raise money. Absolutely. And all the <laughs> dollars generate, must, all scouting is supported by efforts. Uh, tell us a little bit about how that works. It, it is. Uh, the Old Hickory Council and, and thus the Wilkes District are all 100% funded uh, locally. All of our money is, is raised and generated within the but Old Hickory Council taxes. locally. Not from taxes. <laughs> um, so uh, we have several fundraising programs that support the council. Uh, right now with back to school is also popcorn season, so Boy Scouts sell popcorn. That is a chance for the scout to um, earn a commission for uh, him or herself to support their effort in the program. Uh, it is also uh, a chance for the council to, to raise um, some dollars to support the program uh, and that, that helps both the council and the scout. Um, we, do, uh, we have a lot of units that do individual fundraising uh, and it could be through uh, supporting efforts at Merle Fest, uh, it could be, uh, or any of the other festivals that we have here, uh, the occasional uh, chicken queue or other fundraising project. Uh, but there is an emphasis on the boys um, having an opportunity, boys and girls having the opportunity to earn their way through the program. Uh, and with a little bit of fundraising and a little bit of effort on the part of the youth, there is a, um, a, good, effort, a, a good opportunity for them to do that. Uh, we also have an annual campaign called Friends of Scouting. Yeah. And that is, our, that is probably our big campaign and that's where we not only talk to families, that are already in the program and give them the opportunity to, to contribute directly. But we have a separate part of that campaign that, that goes out into the community and, uh, and finds those community leaders and organizations that may not be supporting directly as a leader, but still give them an opportunity to contribute and support to our program. Well, in Elkin, a few months back, we honored Hal Stewart, who's a yes. retired uh, physician and just a heart and soul of the Elkin community and he was that friend of scouting and we had a breakfast and it was just and that and we had a chicken dinner here in Wilkes County uh, with uh, some of our community partners invited them out and had some of our recent graduates of the scouting program young people who are out in all different directions now come back and talk to those community leaders about what scouting means to them because that's the that's the goal is to 
build these young people and prepare them uh, for life and, and then ha to give them the opportunity to come back and speak to the community and about what scouting means. I can sure as I, I can see at this moment, uh, maybe two years ago, McNeil Nissan had a grand opening celebration. The Cam Finley's troop was uh, on the site uh, selling hot dogs. Mm -hmm. And uh, what a, you know, it just was a message about, you know, this is so wonderful. Uh, Larry uh, Skipper was his young band was there, and that everything just really fit together. I, I'll never forget that Saturday. Tell us about Cam Family. Uh, one of our longtime volunteers, a lot of history in uh, uh, in scouting here. His troop that he is the scoutmaster of is the one I mentioned earlier that's been around for I believe 87 years, um, and that's a pretty good record. He's the current scoutmaster. Uh, but not only is he running that troop, you know, scouting happens on Monday night, and, and you're going to find Cam Finley at the church with his scouts on Monday night. But he also spends a lot of time on the other side uh, working with our community partners and help us do that development uh, for that additional support. Um, and, and he's just uh, incredibly enthusiastic about this program. He has a, a, a tremendous passion for it. Uh, and we have a lot of leaders in the, in the community that, that share that passion and, uh, and really get out there and make it work, not only every Monday night, but in between Monday nights behind the scenes in the community. You made another statement that I uh, will carry away from this relationship, but I, I can never lay it down. Right. Uh, tell us about uh, the essence of scouting in that regard, if you will. Well, you know, when I followed my son through the program, um, I was not... Uh, I was not reluctant at first, but I was a little hesitant because it can be a little bit overwhelming when you first jump into a, a troop and you see, you know, all the activity that's going on. But as I followed my son through the program, it wasn't just my work in his unit where he happened to be scouting, but it was by going to roundtables, meeting other leaders, participating in Wood Badge as a, as a student first and then as a staff member later, where you start developing that community of, of scouters. Uh, that are your that are your your friends and and so my son graduated out of the program and went on to other things um, probably ten years ago now and and I I still find a home in scouting I still I know what scouting did for me and my family as I as we were raising our son and I know it can do the same things for other families um, if we can just find the right ways to get them engaged and encourage them to jump in with both feet the way that my wife and I did when he was a scout. And you really just find a group of, of positive, uh, energetic people who are running a terrific program. And scouting, there are a lot of great programs no out there. Is it? Well, there, my son also played youth sports for a time yeah. until he reached that age where all of his friends had put down youth sports and were staying in scouting. And that's where he stayed as an older scout. Um, and so uh, there are a lot of great programs out there, but I don't know of one yet that puts the experiences that we give to the boys with the values that we try to try to instill in them while we're giving them those experiences and give them the opportunity uh, to, to learn how to be leaders and, and to learn how to, uh, to be servants in their community. I'm sure he's using that today with the Sheriff's Department. I think he is. Uh, I think he is. You took a canoe trip. I think this would be a good way for us to kind of get to the end okay. about uh, uh, a life-changing experience for both of you. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about that. So uh, one of the high adventure bases that Boy Scouts operate is, uh, is what we refer to as the Boundary Waters, and it is essentially a 10-day canoe trek um, with uh, boys and a couple of leaders in three canoes, and you paddle out and we were in Canada, uh, 55 miles north of the, uh, the U.S. border in Canada. Went many days without seeing another group of people. And it was uh, not only enjoyable the experience, but it was also a very difficult, physically demanding experience. And we watched young men that struggled to carry a canoe on their back days one, two, and three. Uh, by the end of that 10 days, coming out of the woods, uh, uh, carrying a canoe and an extra piece of gear, uh, with a big smile on their face and that feeling of accomplishment and overcoming something that was difficult and doing something that for a lot of them would be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I actually went back a second time with a different group. Um, 
But just giving them those experiences where they get to really test themselves and learn and, 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 uh, and learn as a group and belong to that crew that's out there in the wilderness, that's a, that's a great opportunity. Will Bishop is a district commissioner, a trainer, a leader, developing young men and their families. And the women are coming uh, in a good place that's going to be uh, uh, joining the Boy Scouts. Uh, so tell us uh, the impact of scouting in your life as we finish today. Well, um, I think that the biggest impact for me is that association with, with positive people that, that are doing something that they really believe is meaningful. And I've seen a lot of changes uh, in the program. Um, and one of the biggest changes, of course, now is this year we have uh, at least five so far uh, young ladies in the Boy Scout program. They're joined Cub Scouts. Uh, and by February of 2019, we will likely have a, a, troop, uh, a, a troop of girls that are scouting. Great. And we'll be called Scouts BSA. Boy Scouts is still the parent organization, but older Scouts will be Scouts BSA. And one of the reasons that I've stayed with the program, of course, is because I believe in what it stands for and what it does. And the big change of bringing young ladies into the program, my first thought is if it's important for a young man to understand these values. And if we know scouting is already a family program, why would we ever do anything other than offer the program to young ladies and their families? And, and that's really what those changes come down to for me. Uh, it is a big change for Boy Scouts, uh, but I think it is the change that will open this program up to so many more families and so more right importantly, thing right thing to do for young people. Uh, and that's what we're after, Thanks and that's one of us today. We'll be Thanks so much for the opportunity. It was here. my honor to be here. Thank you, you for the opportunity. Great joy and blessing. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.